Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting, and our topic today is life for reserves and life for liquidation. Here, guys, I want to make it clear. This video is only valid in the US. Why? Because IFRS uh, doesn't allow companies to work with LIFO. We can work with LIFO only in the US. And also because in the US we have what we call the LIFO conformity rule. The IRS requires companies to follow the LIFO conformity rule. What is it? If a company uses LIFO for tax, it must use LIFO for financial statement, for external financial reporting. Okay, so why, what is LIFO reserve? Okay, I can use LIFO for tax, so I will use it. However, my internal control is not based on LIFO. My internal control is based on FIFO or average cost. So I create a contra inventory account called LIFO reserves. So the LIFO reserves, also called LIFO allowance, is reported as a contra account to adjust the balance of inventory from the internal method to the LIFO method for external reporting. So, okay, we are working with FIFO or average until December 30th. And then on December 31st, Let's change it to LIFO. However, on January 1st, we will go back to FIFO. So we will not change all of our records. We will be only working with one journal entry. And then we have uh, some reasons why to not work with LIFO for internal records. The high costs for LIFO, contractual agreements, and so on. Uh, we will decrease our net income if we work with LIFO and FIFO or average. Uh, that's how we work with pricing decision usually. So let's go to our Excel file before working with LIFO liquidation. So what do we have here? Scarpy Corporation began 2020 with a balance of uh, 950,000 in its LIFO reserve account. So, okay, this is our beginning balance. This balance means that at the beginning of the year, the inventory balance under LIFO is $950,000 lower than it would be under FIFO. So, what do we have here? Let's create a T account. That is what you have. That is good when we are working on almost live Classes. Life of reserve. We have a balance of $950,000. By the end of 2020, assume that the difference between LIFO and FIFO balance is, is then $1.2 million. So, what do we have here? We have here an ending balance of $1. $1.2 million. And the life of reserve is adjusted to reflect the increase in the reserve. The life of reserve, wow, we have a credit balance. It is a contra account. Come on, Professor Scarping, come on. Okay, now we're good. And what do we have here? The life of reserve is the number to balance this journal entry here. So if we have an ending balance of 1.2 million and we have a beginning balance of 950, how much do we need? Ending balance less beginning. Balance 250. What is our debit here? Our debit is cost of goods sold. So we are increasing. Why? Because usually 
LIFO has a lower net income, so a higher cost of goods sold. And what if the next year our LIFO reserves decreases? The difference is only $1 million. We would be doing the opposite journal entry. Debit LIFO reserve, added cost of goods sold. But it's not usually how LIFO reserves works. Usually our inventory is an increasing balance. Okay, guys, and what is life for liquidation? Let's assume that we are working with LIFO, okay? We are not working with LIFO reserves. We are working with LIFO. However, we are working with periodic method instead of perpetual method. So under LIFO, the last units purchased are assumed to be sold first. In some periods, the number of units sold will be greater than the number of units purchased. In this instance, previous years, layers of inventory are recorded as sold. These indents are known as life for liquidation. So life for liquidation results in old costs being matched with the current selling price. If costs have been increasing or decreasing, life for liquidation produces higher or lower net income. How does it work? Whoa, whoa. Let's go to our Excel file again. Whoa, come on. Life for liquidation. Let's consider that Skype Incorporation used the life for inventory method. The company began the year with, in with inventory of 50,000 units. So let's delete it here. Uh, Beginning inventory, what do we have? We have 50,000 units. How much? $20 per unit. So our total will be $1 million. This is my beginning inventory. During the year, 149,000 were purchased. Increasing price, 25. So our total here is 3.7 million dollars. So our goods available for sale. Remember, uh, beginning inventory plus purchase equal goods available for sale. Less ending inventory is the cost of goods sold. However, uh, let's work with the life of liquidation, and then we work with a different way. We find our cost of goods sold based on how many units were sold. So we combine here sort of a uh, periodic system and perpetual system. So let's do it here. Uh, 160, uh, 165. So here, life last in first out. So our first out will be purchased. We have 149 lower than 165. So here we are taking away our purchase. Perfect. How much from beginning inventory? 165 less 149. 16,000 price, 20. How much? 320. So our cost of goods sold will be $4 million. And what about our ending inventory? Ending inventory, we have nothing from purchase, only from beginning inventory. 50,000 less 16. We have remaining 34 times our price 20. Our ending inventory will be 6. 80. Remember the golden rule of periodic inventory system. Cost of goods sold plus any inventory is equal to goods available for sale. Let's do it here. Yes, the numbers match. So, yes, we are right. Okay, guys, so this is the life of liquidations. And if our prices are decreasing, for instance, 18 instead of uh, 25, 
we will produce a lower cost of goods sold because most of our cost of goods sold will be based on lower price. However, this is not what usually happens. Usually, we have increasing prices. Okay, guys, so thank you so much. If you have questions or comments, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Uh, subscribe our channel, like our video, like our Facebook page as well, Accounting Hub by Dr. Scarping. And have a very nice day.